there is nothing wrong with your internet, do not attempt to adjust your settings. We are controlling the podcast. We control the squealing and the screams. We can make your heart flutter, your eyes blur from tears, or sharpen your mind to crystal clarity. For the next hour, sit back. We are in control of what you hear. We repeat, there is nothing wrong with your setting. You are about to experience the awe and mystery known as the female mind. You are now entering the Fangirl Zone. Welcome to episode 83 of Sci-Fi Talk on the Fangirl Zone, a podcast where we discuss shows on the Sci-Fi channel. I'm Steve. And I'm Sean Fangirl S. And tonight we'll be discussing episode one of season three of Killjoys. I can't believe we're on season three. Yes. <laughs> and it's, it's like it's been forever since we've had Killjoys oh, on the screen. I know. It's been great. Let me make a quick aside. Uh, my husband decided to sit and watch with me because he happened to be off and he's like, Oh, what is this? Is this a new show that's coming on? This looks pretty interesting. I'm like, no, this is season three, hon. <laughs> I'm like, sorry. He's like, oh, okay. So I got to catch up. I'm like, you can jump in, but don't start asking me questions. <laughs> so, but it, it caught his interest. So, you know what? I look at it as if any of it catches somebody's interest, then they'll want to go back and watch. And that's just another viewer. That's right. That will add to these ratings that Steve once again has found for us. Yes, the premiere episode of season three pulled in as 0.15 in adults 18 to 49 with 0.552 million viewers, making it the 54th overall cable show for the evening. That's pretty good. I mean, it's always weird when it's a Friday night anyway, and this right. is one of three shows that we have on Friday night. So it's amazing. And, you know, we know Friday night's date night, but we know that everybody likes this show. So we're glad you're watching and you're joining us along this awesome Killjoys like road. So let's get into episode one of season three, shall we? All right. Boom doggy. <laughs> Dutch pre Davin, Alvis, and Fancy Lee storm a Hulan base to only to find a single Hulan home. He delivers a message. Hulan know they killed the Arkan pool and there are more Hulan in the quad who were non Arkan to rock. Davin and Dutch. Head to the rack where Banyan Gray from Intergalactic Oversight calls out Dutch about Johnny being one of the 437 agents that are MIA. Johnny is looking for Clara and is surprised to instead find Ollie who's wearing Alice, Clara's spec arm. Dutch and crew hatch a plan to find more Hewlin, kill one, and harvest the black goo from its body to use to kill more Hewlin. To do this, they use information Johnny has been sending about chemical beacons and two black market dealers to lure the Hewlin out. Johnny and Ollie go to a Hackmod bar looking for Clara, who had been recruiting Hackmods to take on the factory. Johnny gets a mod, and they discover Hackmods are going missing. Investigating this leads them into a trap that almost kills Ollie. Dutch's plan works. The team escapes capture, kills some Hewlin, and deliver their own message. Dutch is going to start a war. This is just crazy. So much happening. Yes. Like, okay. What? Oh, I don't even know where to start because I was like, er. Okay, let's start Johnny and Ollie because why? Why? That's basically <laughs> what I'm, I'm saying. And you guys are going to probably follow me at least through this. So Johnny is out. All of a sudden we see him. He's running. He's got a mod on. I'm like, what is going on? Why does he have, what happened to his eye? I started freaking out. Right. And then, you know, lo and behold, he's saved and we see the arm, but it's not the person that we think it is. No. <laughs> Where's Stephanie Leonidas? Exactly. And I start freaking out and I'm like, all right, what, what's happening? I don't know about you, but I was questioning everything. I'm like, I trust nobody now. Johnny has an eye and then he takes it off and, and I felt a little better. I'm right. like, okay, so somebody didn't grab him. Because we've heard that with the hack mods, a lot of times people are captured and just have it done and they don't even know. And so right. that's why I was like, oh, my God, what's going on? Where are they? And and it's like I, I wanted to start pacing in my living room. Like, oh, God, okay, <laughs> what's happening? What could happen? I know they're not going to handhold us and walk us scene by scene. What happened in, in between? But I'm like, oh, God, they found out. 
they did this. And, you know, I was a little relieved. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, um, can I just ask, what kind of name is Rat City? Ah, <laughs> uh, I was like, uh, okay, it could very well be truth and advertising. Not exactly the place that I want to be then. Right. <laughs> I mean, you know, Steve, you were just in really beautiful places recently on vacation. Would you want to go visit a place called Rat City? Not on your life. Right. <laughs> so, uh, this Ollie girl that's got Clara's arm. Like, I didn't even know how that was possible because I thought that Clara had said something previously about, like, if it was disconnected, it would, like, blow up or something. I can't remember exactly what she said. It was something specific about the arm. But the right. arm is sending out, like, signals for, for Johnny. So what do you think is going on? That's a really good question, and I'm not... A hundred percent sure. I mean, because we find out that Johnny and Clara were together prior to the episode and that Clara went to Rat City to try to recruit some more of the um, hack mods. And he hadn't seen or heard from her since. So he, of course, he goes looking for her. But how he, Clara was able to have the arm send out the signal while losing it is beyond me. I, I don't have any idea how she could have done that, knowing that she was going to lose the arm. And like you said, I think there was, I recall something from her that, yeah, you can't just remove a mod once you've gotten it. And yet somehow Ollie's got it and Clara's nowhere to be seen. I'm really worried about Clara. Yes. I was a little bit more worried about Johnny at one point, though, when they're in the hack hack mod bar. Because he was wearing his fake mod so that he'd fit in. And he ends right. up, this isn't funny, but it is, chasing after Clara's friend, who's like, no, I haven't seen her, you should go. And she, like, takes off. Well, okay, that wasn't suspicious or anything. Right. So she, he goes to talk to her, bumps into another person, and the eye falls out. And then they're like, he's a basic! And it was kind of funny that all these mods, like, freak out that there's somebody who doesn't have anything done to him. Because right. some of them had some really severe things. Yes. And uh, side note, too, did, I think the answer is yes, but did sci-fi ask for, a, like, put out a thing to ask for people who were amputees and stuff to come and, like, be on this show? I don't remember seeing that. I do know, at least in one episode, at least one person it does have a blade leg, for real. Right. So I, I'm thinking that there were several actual amputees that they had come on this which i think is really really cool that they are using people who other people might say it's a disability but you know showing that well basically they're they're perfectly fine and which they are but you know what i mean like especially in this kind of society that right. they are actually more than even than johnny yes so and it was really cool because i think it's this episode where they have and it's not the movie they have Blade Runners, right? Which, um, and, or I think they called them jumpers. Yes. So it was uh, guys who had that, which if you've ever seen like um, amputees who run that blade leg and it yes. kind of jumps and I've seen them in like various races actually. And that looked so cool. That had to be a guy who actually had the blades because that just looked so authentic with this guy like running and doing the jump. And mm -hmm. And I love how Johnny's like, he's getting away. I can't even catch him. <laughs> and I know that in, uh, I was reading something about it was a race that they had to have like an official ruling because they were saying people who had the blades actually can move a lot faster than right. people who are just running. And I'm like, that just was really cool and how the guy was jumping. And I know that sounds really strange, I guess, the way I'm saying it, but I was just like, super impressed that it was kind of an all-inclusive thing that they had in this episode because unfortunately you don't see that too often right and when any kind of movie or show does it i am like super impressed with it and i know that what is it 13 ghosts did the same thing they had like, a double amputee as one of the ghosts which is weird when you see them like wrapped in cellophane but <laughs> that's a whole different thing i know i've yeah. clearly got off on a tangent <laughs> sean took a left turn i will try to come back so let's come back to the crazy thing that I, I was also going to ask about the factory. Do we have an actual location of this place? 
I don't remember them ever saying it. No, I don't think we have. Okay. And is the attack on the factory strictly something that they wanted to do to help all the people who've been forcibly modified? Yes, and to keep other people from being modified. Okay. All right, Sean's back from the left turn. I apologize. Right, yeah. yeah. Clara's <laughs> goal was to shut down the factory. Okay, that makes completely. sense because it is yes. like just forcing somebody into something that they don't want. Right. I mean, obviously, if somebody wants to have something done, I'm sure there's people out there you can get people to volunteer. But even later on, we find out that it's like slavery because they're taken and then all this stuff is done to them and it's just horrible right and they basically become indentured servants because of the mods which i don't get how are you an indentured servant you're doing this to me not by me asking you but right that aside let me talk about the awesome little tiny mod that johnny ends up getting (laughs) because he's found out and well no basics in no basics out so he had to get a mod and i love that ollie's like okay just modify him Johnny's like, you're a terrible negotiator. Right. But Johnny gets a finger saver. And I'm like, it, when they first, like, they're sh- what is it, shaving his, no, they were waxing his arm right. to put whatever on. And I'm like, why are they waxing his entire arm? <laughs> Again, random thought out of my head. But he gets it. It's just in his hand. And it was very Borg-like. Yes. And I'm like, that on his middle finger. So basically, he's going to like slip people off with this little... Like, laser all the time? Maybe that's just me. I would be like, (laughs) there goes that again. Sean, you're going to hurt somebody flipping them off because you're angry in traffic. You need to stop. (laughs) I know. And Johnny was more than excited. He was. Actually getting (laughs) a mod. I think that was kind of funny. I I didn't know what he was going to do. And I thought that was going to be something to help him, like, hack into computers more or communicate with the ships and i'm like oh no it's like a little late just a little laser okay right (laughs) they're like okay how do i do this Hidden weapon hidden weapon not really hidden though because you see it on his hand i did like he's like how do i do this just concentrate and see him looking really hard at his hand and then it happens he's like (laughs) ah and then it's like he can't stop like even later when he's talking to ollie it's like every time he just keeps looking at his hand and it's like on off on off like a little kid with a new toy. Yeah. It was kind of cute, but kind of weird. And I was talking about the jumper that basically ambushes Johnny to, to get him to follow him. And Ollie right. actually gets ambushed by somebody. But thankfully, Johnny realized, came back to help Ollie, shoots the guy, and then green goo starts coming out. So right away, I was thinking, oh my God, green goo, this guy isn't really going to be dead, right? Right. But it was even weirder. Yeah. Because, like, his face, he had a face under his face. And it was gross. And what did he call him? Well, did he call him actually, like, no face or something? But Or two face? I can't remember. Two face. -face. Yeah, it was two face. And then he, like, oh, here, let me slice off the old face that we're seeing. Oh, there's a face underneath. And Ollie collapses. It's like, okay, this probably isn't good. I thought she just passed out. Right. But apparently, no, she was hurt. But. Like, I didn't see her ever actually get hit. Did you? I was pretty sure she did. So it was more than just, like, a brush with whatever was happening. Like, I know they were fighting, but, like, nothing that would be enough to knock her out is really what I mean. Right. No, I think she either got stabbed or something and was losing blood. Oh, okay. That's probably what caused her to pass out. I gotcha. And apparently hack mods are missing and going missing a lot. So interesting to find out what's going to happen. But there was a really cute moment later on with Johnny and Dutch. They're communicating via the hollow message, and he's giving her all the coordinates, which is great, so they can try to find the plasma. But then we realize that it's not a live feed. Right. And I didn't realize it because it's kind of going back and forth and showing, you know, Johnny trying to rush Ollie over back to the bar to get uh, somebody to work on her to find out what's wrong. And... When Dutch is talking to him, though, I thought this was actually what was happening. And I was a little sad that they weren't actually talking. Right. And that was really sad because then she replays it and makes me wonder how many times she replayed it. Right. Yeah, you definitely can tell that they have a very strong connection with each other. And it really 
kind of tears them up when they're not together. It does. And I don't want to be sad, so they have to come back together. Yes. <sighs> All right. I just ran through everything with Johnny and Ollie. Like, I didn't even let you talk. <laughs> oh, and by the way, Ollie, who I did not even realize because I've watched Bitten. Right. Tommy Amber Peary, I think is how you say your last name, from Bitten. And it's an awesome book series. If you guys have not read it, you should totally read it. It's great. I have not been able to watch the entire series, though, of Bitten because I start comparing way too much to the books. Which is why I really need to watch the shows before I read the books. But I, right. I read the books a long time ago, so still awesome show. Or right. from what I've seen in awesome books, they'll go read those. Okay, back on track again. Right. Take us to uh, Dutch. Alrighty. Well, Dutch has kind of assembled a gang, <laughs> and along with Pre, Avis, and Fancy, they attack a Hewlin base. And of course, there's only one Hewlin there, so. They don't get a whole lot out of him, except that he does tell them that the others know that someone dried up the plasma in Arkin, and they're regrouping and prepping for war. Now, I'm a little scared, though, that there's more Holland, and they did not just come from the Arkin like, pool. Right. And let me say, Pre is totally me, because when they're running, he's like, ah, oh, I'm not going to make it. Go on without me. <laughs> yeah, that's me. I feel like, I can't make it. Just... Just come back for me later. Right. <laughs> How many different Holland, oh, I don't know what, like. Variety. Yes, species thank you. Almost. I was like, <laughs> what's the word I'm looking for? I would say species, yeah. How many do you think there are? I'm afraid it's a very large number. Oh, God, I don't know if I can deal with that. Right. It just depends on how many from each pool there is. That's crazy. Yes. And we also find out that there's 437 MIA killjoys. That's scary because does it mean there's that many, well, obviously, minus Johnny, that many of them that are Hullen? Right. Or are they just being taken like the Hackmon? Ah. And being turned into Hulans. Oh, my gosh. Or were they killed off by Hullans who they might have been sympathizers or something? Right. So many questions. Not enough exactly. answers. Yeah, this episode definitely gave us a lot of questions. Yes. But, of course, this uh, new taskmaster, the intergalactic investigator, Banyan, is, um, of course, busting on all the killjoys about the 437 MIAs. But she also has to make sure she um, busts on uh, Dutch as well because Johnny is missing as far as they're concerned. Now, do you think it would be just too obvious if she was Holland? I think you can almost count on it. That she is Holland? Yeah. See, I feel like that's just too glaringly obvious. <laughs> it's like really... Too simple, yeah. yeah. And they never make things simple for us. Come on. Yeah, that's true. This is Joseph Malozzi <laughs> we're talking about. I don't know. We'll find out, I'm sure. Yes. So Dutch and the group heads to Leith to apprehend Pippin Foster. A hawker of all things smuggled. And this was absolutely hilarious because they're in a steam bath and having to fight. <laughs> oh, yeah. That was interesting. And, okay, the other people, I'm going to say bodyguards, fighting in a towel. I mean, how awkward does that have to be anyway? I feel like, all right, right. you're going to have to try to fight and move and keep this towel on. Good luck. Yeah, I mean, obviously they're wearing stuff underneath, but just still, that's probably not something you're used to being any kind of like stunt person. No. And then Dutch wearing a very small original series Star Trek s kind of outfit. Right. But and she was kicking butt. Although it was funny when she's like, "Ew, where were you hiding that? Would he have a knife?" Yeah. And I'm like, I was thinking the same thing when all of a sudden the guy right. has a weapon. I'm like, ugh. Yeah. <laughs> that was gross. I don't know where that was. Uh, don't touch me. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Please don't uh, stab me. Right? <laughs> your, your, does your mother know where you put right. things like that? <laughs> like, maybe you have some weird modification that we don't know. You know, you hide it, like, in the upper thigh. I don't know. Right. <laughs> so, they get a hold of Mr. Pippin, who is the parents of a very well-to-do family, and... um of course, he thinks it's just a straight 
kidnapping and, oh, his parents will take care of it even though they're dead. Yeah, that's weird. Yeah. <laughs> but they've taken him so he can help them locate a chemical beacon that has gone missing. So they come up with uh, Dutch's plan, get the beacon, lure more Hulan to it, kill more Hulan, extract plasma from the carcasses, and um, interesting plan. Foster, of course, locates the last buyer of the beacon, a sweet Janet, and brokers a deal. Sweet Janet. That just sounds yeah. like, mm, this is probably not going to go well. No. So of course, Dutch and the game meet with sweet Janet on Parallax to swap cash for one beacon, but the deal goes awry when agents looking for Pippin get in the way. And then we get the most unexpected part of the entire episode, as far as I was concerned. They're all caught, and out of nowhere, Fancy Lee shows up and throws a boomerang-type weapon to dispatch the uninvited guests. Oh, and I love that, because he's like, nobody move or breathe. It's like, wait, what? Yeah. <laughs> okay, and even sweet Janet here was, like, watching, like, oh, hey, this is kind of cool, until it knocks her out. Because she right. was the last one that goes down. Which, at first, I didn't think she did go down. So I'm like, oh, she's part of it. And I'm like, oh, no, there she is. She's laying there. Yeah. So, of course, the gang gathers up and heads outside, and things go bad again. Big surprise. Because they... Yeah, they look up, and above them is a trolling Hewlin wreck ship, and the lights come on, and they detain them all. And I just want to say, again, random thought from Sean's head, I love the way Dutch's hair was. She always has, like, the most awesome, like, way her hair is, so, but right. random. But when they're all taken up, and they're all being asked questions, oh my god, it was hilarious. Yes, because, of course... You get Pre and Avis. Oh, yeah, that's true. <laughs> Davin, and they're all just being as smart I, ass as they can I was like, get. go ahead. You know they're being buttheads. You can totally say it. <laughs> uh, what's a bartender and a pre student? Oh, that's a valid question. Oh, it is very smart, yeah. And I'm like, I half expected, like, oh, is this the start of a joke? A bartender right. and a priest walk into a, a tray, you know, something like that. Those two, I actually, I just want more interactions with those two. Right. Because they can just be so goofy together. And just the fact of what we learned last season, that Pre is like the serious badass that we really know nothing about. Right. And then last time, too, we also learned that Avis kind of is, too. And he's kind of yes. keeps it, you know, all pushed down and quiet. Like, I think these two would be the most unsuspecting like, undercover badasses, like, in the show. Right. So I kind of want, like, just a random, like, little snippet of a show, like, an outtake that they put in with just those two doing something completely outlandish. Yeah. And you also got to love the self-imposed competition that Davin and Fancy are going to have. Oh, yeah. <laughs> oh, it was so weird, though. I mean, Dutch has that whole, like, kind of, like, just trust me kind of thing to Pippin, who, uh, you just kidnapped him? I'm not sure how that's going to play out. Right. Just trust me, I'll get you out of this. It's like, yeah, you got him into it, so, eh, don't know. Right. But when they start their little badass move, I was a little grossed out. Because they're, like, right. peeling off, like, the fake skin to pull out, what, what was it, syringes of stuff? Right, I'm like, I yeah. couldn't remember they're exactly. collecting the, um... Plasma. I was like, oh, that's yeah. what are you doing? <laughs> yeah, it kind of grossed me out, which is weird because, I mean, this show has stuff that will will gross you out. And somehow that got to me more than most things. <laughs> I don't know why. Right. Yeah, it's just weird that they have two faces. Oh, uh, yeah. The, yeah, the, the real face is sitting there covered in plasma with the face over it. And you just. Bleh. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and then, but with our guys like pulling off, was it off Davin's? back they pull off like fake skin stuff to pull like the syringes out when they were gonna when our team right, was gonna break yes. it that that's i'm like okay you're creeping me out i don't know what it was <laughs> it was something with the skin this episode all around and i was like oh okay <laughs> i'm fine with them dissecting things it's i don't know this was weird that's what got me this episode i'm weird but yeah our guys kind of totally go badass all because of a little story the dutch pr decides to tell the officer right which I thought was hilarious. Yeah, 
Scott. You fell for our trick. Who's the BA now? Right? And I love how the Holland um, officer was like, we're not the monsters. And she's like, I never said you were. Right. Because <laughs> I am. Who's projecting now? That was great. Love, I loved the fight, though. It was awesome. Yes, it was. And I loved how confused Pippin looked. Like, what is happening? What is that? Yeah. He was like anybody who's never watched this show before, basically. Right. <laughs> so he was my husband in this this scenario. What What is that? What the heck? Yeah. So there was a lot of that happening. <laughs> but please proceed. All right. And after turn shows the others the 36 cloak Hulan ships, it doesn't take long for Davin to investigate. But the fact that he does it alone and perhaps even secretly brings up a whole nother set of issues. Why do you think he, he did that without telling them? I think it goes all the way back to what they did to him in the military. That he didn't want the rest of them to know? Yeah. Okay. I really do. But I thought they all know. Oh, no, they know what happened on that planet that right. the goo, like, rejected. Yes. Oh, okay. Now, doesn't Dutch know, though? I thought somebody on our team does know. Yeah, I, I'm sure Dutch and Johnny probably do know. But the rest of them do And know. that's probably why he didn't want to tell them, because they would have know, said, no, you're doing this for this reason and not our reason. Okay, I gotcha. So now we got both brothers separated from Dutch. It's never a good thing. No. And I can't believe all of those ships are just sitting there. Although it's really yeah. interesting, too, that... Oh, God, why am I blanking on the guy's name? Banyan. He's like, okay, when all this stuff went down, this place went totally dark, which, of course, right. is a red flag that he was able to even find what was there. Because I feel like there it would be better cloaked. I don't know. Because they weren't able to find a whole lot of stuff, and then suddenly it's like, oh, yeah, let me hit this, like, let me turn off the alarm. Boop, boop. Oh, look at all these ships. Right. Although it's kind of scary that there's that many, and obviously they all have room for a whole lot of people. Could this be where our 436, because we don't count Johnny, Right. we're supposed to be going? Yes, very possible. I don't like it, Steve. I don't like it at all. I know. <laughs> I know. And, of course, the whole reason for this war, Anila, was nowhere to be found in this episode. Well. Not even a mention of it. Other than a war is coming. Yes. Winter is coming. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but I don't know if our team's ready for her, because she is, like, Obviously, so far advanced, and all of these ships and all these people, it's scary. I don't know how I'm going to feel. Right. It's its not looking like um, Dutch and gang are going to have enough um, gun power to uh, take on this war right now. Hopefully, things will be changing soon. Yes, let's hope. Oh, my gosh. So this is a crazy episode. As you can tell by how like fast I was talking. <laughs> I was getting crazy excited. So I hope everybody else kind of feels the same because this was nuts. Although I did not get to live tweet this. I was not home. So hopefully you guys are live tweeting it and watching all of the shows. And if you're not doing it live, at least do it when you're watch rewatching because it actually makes a difference. And Steve and I have talked about this before. Make sure you tag them on Twitter because the networks are watching social media. And if you watch other shows that we watch, such as Winona Earp, you'll see that they're really pushing for you guys to live or not just live tweet, but tag them because it shows how many people are actually interested in the show other than just the numbers that Steve gives us at the beginning. Right. And of course, the live plus seven day, always a huge thing because it almost always goes up. Like I said, Friday nights can be kind of difficult, but the networks know people go out Friday nights, but they also know people watch these later. So just make sure you are tagging it. It makes a huge difference. And if you're going to tag them, you might as well tag us when you're tweeting. We are at FGZ Podcast because we like talking to you guys. And of course, we want to know what you guys think about the show because Steve and I can't be the only ones that have crazy theory. Okay. I can't be the only one who has crazy theories. <laughs> Steve's are usually much more grounded, and I'm like, oh my god, but what about this? I've been around too many people who are wearing tinfoil hats, obviously. So <laughs> go ahead and shoot us an email on anything that you think is very important about this that we may have missed. It's fangirlzonepodcast at gmail.com. You can, of course, find everything over at 
www.fangirlzone.com. We do hope you are enjoying the show. And if you would kindly rate and review us on all the platforms that you're listening to us on, because good ratings help other fans of the show find the show and we're all talking about it. And that's what we want, right? So now that I've stopped talking at like 100 miles an hour for this episode of Sci-Fi Shock, I am Sean Fangirl S. And I'm Steve. Considered the bitch bomb. (laughs) And until next time.